In today's video, I will not only give you healthy low glycemic alternatives to refined sugar, but I will also show you how to use them in daily recipes. I'll cover whole food sweeteners, almost whole food sweeteners, and artificial sweeteners. Furthermore, in some cases, I will also talk about how much it is safe for daily consumption. Watch till the end to find out which popular sweeteners that are generally considered healthy are not low glycemic. I'll also reveal the healthiest low glycemic sweeteners. What's wrong with regular sugar? Well, actually there's nothing wrong. If you are in good health, have ideal weight and consume it in small amounts every now and then. But this is not the case, is it? According to Dr. Greger's How Not to Diet, 200 years ago, the average American ate only about 4 pounds of sugar per year. Today, the same number is 50 pounds. That is 13 teaspoons of straight sugar daily. As a result, you may have candida overgrowth, diabetes, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance or sensitivity and hormonal imbalance, to name a few. Before we move on, if you want to know more about low glycemic diet, about glycemic index and glycemic load and why those matter, make sure to download my free guide to low glycemic plant-based diet. What's the difference between healthy sweeteners and low glycemic sweeteners? For example, dried fruit is considered to be a super healthy sweetener as it's almost whole food, only the water has been extracted from fruit. The problem is that now you're getting the fructose in a concentrated form. Apparently, the water in fruits has a purpose. Research shows that the greater the water content in food, the greater the satiety effect. People tend to eat more or less the same weight of food day in and day out. So, the more water your food contains, the less calories you would consume. Let's start with truly wholesome natural sweeteners. Nothing good taken away and nothing bad added. Applesauce and also unsweetened pear jam. Easy to make at home or get store-bought, making sure it's unsweetened. Especially good if you already have a little bit advanced palate. That is, you appreciate subtle sweetness. A glycemic load is very low. 5 points for a whole cup and less than 1 point for 1 tablespoon. Where can you use applesauce as sweetener? Definitely not in a coffee. Instead, add it to your porridge or dessert bowl or use as topping. Applesauce is also great for baking. Think of muffins, brownies, cookies and cakes. In most cases, applesauce can be also used in candida cleanse and reintroduction phase. Pumpkin puree is a step forward from applesauce in terms of sweetness. To my trained palate, it's very sweet. The sweetest winter squash is butternut squash. Make puree with steamed or oven-baked pumpkin. The glycemic load is a bit higher than that of applesauce, 10 points for a whole cup and 0.6 points for a tablespoon. Use it the same way as applesauce. Watch how I make a delicious mousse with pumpkin puree as the main ingredient. Not suitable on candida cleanse phase, but feel free to try it out when you start to reintroducing foods back into your diet. Feel free to use sweet potato the same way as pumpkin. The glycemic load of sweet potato depends on whether it's baked or boiled. One cup of baked sweet potato puree comes with 25 points and one tablespoon gives 1.6 points. Whereas the boiled potatoes load is a bit lower, sweet potato is not suitable on candida cleanse diet, but will be reintroduced later. Moving up on sweetness scale with persimmon and mango puree. The glycemic load is a bit higher than that of applesauce. Again, you can use those the same way as applesauce and pumpkin puree. Excellent in porridges and desserts like raw buckwheat ricotta, chia pudding or oatmeal. As both are considered sweet fruits, definitely don't have them in candida cleanse phase. Banana is up next. Its glycemic load greatly depends on the ripeness of the fruit. On average, it's 18 points for a cup and 1.1 points for a tablespoon. Once more, make use of it in baking, porridges and desserts. Generally not suitable on candida diet, although green bananas might be an exception. And the last whole food low glycemic sweeteners are nut butters made of sweetened nuts like cashews, peanuts and almonds. 
If you're just coming off sugar, you might not believe it, but give yourself a few weeks and nuts will actually taste sweet. Peanuts and almonds have zero glycemic points, while cashew butter comes with one point per tablespoon. Use them in combination with other whole food sweeteners mentioned earlier for baking in porridges, smoothies and desserts. Almonds are suitable on candida diet, while cashews and peanuts aren't. Let's move on to almost whole food low glycemic sweeteners. Well, almost, because water has been removed from the following sweet powders. But most importantly, there are vitamins, minerals and fiber. Mesquite flour is a traditional Native American food with high mineral and fiber content. Its glycemic load is 2.4 points per tablespoon. I simply love it in my evening dessert bowl made of oats and chia seeds. Combined with either apple sauce or mango puree, I do not need any other sweetener. You can also add it to your oatmeal or other porridge. Over the years, I've used mesquite in many recipes on my blog, including cinnamon rolls, caramel sauce, muffins, blondies, cookies and so on. I have to say, I absolutely love the taste. It's sweet and caramelly. Now, I get a super affordable deal from a local supplier, but on Amazon you'll find it approximately with $16 per 14 ounces. I encourage you to find a local health food store and ask for a bulk price like I did. Feel free to enjoy it on Candida Diet. Next up is carob powder, made from the dried pods of the carob tree. One of the benefits of carob powder is that it's a caffeine-free ingredient that can be used as a replacement for cacao powder in brownies, cookies, cakes, candies and smoothies. Carob is less bitter than chocolate and has a roasted, naturally sweet flavour. For this reason, my carob chips are made without any added sugar. The glycemic load of carob powder is about 2.4 points for a tablespoon. Be aware that there is also roasted carob powder which is very bitter and therefore cannot be used as sweetener. So look for unroasted or lightly roasted carob powder. The color should be light brown. How healthy is carob powder? According to Dr. Greger, it's a green light food. Yay! The use of carob is almost identical to mosquito powder. However, carob is a bit more versatile in the sense that you can make delicious chocolatey looking bakes and desserts without the need to add any other sweeteners. Not to mention the usual porridges and dessert bowls. The price can vary greatly, but the best deal I found at the moment on Amazon.com is $8 per 16 ounces. Carob is an excellent substitution for cacao on Candida diet. Moving on to monk fruit powder, or more precisely, monk fruit juice powder. Be aware though, most sellers provide artificial sweeteners, including monk fruit extract, which is absolutely not the same as monk fruit juice powder. If it is the real thing, it will have 400 calories and 1 gram of fiber per 100 grams of powder. I didn't find any info on the glycemic load anywhere, but given that it has a lot less fiber than carob and mesquite, it probably comes with a higher GL as well. It is claimed to be eight times sweeter than regular sugar. Unfortunately, I can't vouch for that because I haven't tried it myself. I wouldn't put it in a drink though, as it is powder and probably wouldn't dissolve well. If you have experience with it, please comment below. Other than that, use it in baking or to add sweetness to smoothies, desserts and porridge bowls. There are no pure monk fruit juice powder listings on Amazon.com, but I link to some products that are the real thing in the description. The price varies from $24 to $88 per 8-ounce package. Totally acceptable on Candida diet. We have a few more powders to go, so let's move on to Yacon powder. Derived from the Yacon root, a South American tuber that tastes like an apple. Again, I didn't find information about the glycemic load and to add insult to injury, also the rest of the nutritional data varies enormously. For example, the amount of fiber presented by different manufacturers went from 2 to 40 grams per 100 grams of product. Go and figure. However, and this is my personal assumption so don't take it too seriously, but 
As it's very similar to carob and mesquite, I'd presume around 30 points per 100 grams and 3 points per tablespoon. Jägum powder is mildly sweet and has an aftertaste if you eat the pure powder. However, when mixed into foods, it's not distinguishable. It's definitely not good for sweetening your hot or cold drinks. Instead, use it as all the other powders in desserts, porridges and baking. The cost varies from $20 to $44 per pound. Totally acceptable on Candida diet. And the last powder sweetener is Lukuma powder. Nicknamed the gold of the Incas, Lukuma has been used as a traditional remedy in South America for centuries. It also offers a relatively good amount of both soluble and insoluble fiber. And for a change, there's a definite glycemic load value, half point per one tablespoon. Mix Lukuma powder into desserts, smoothies and ice creams and use in baking. The cost varies from $22 to $35 per pound. Totally acceptable on Candida diet. And the last almost whole food sweetener is apple juice concentrate. Which is apple juice from which most of the water has been extracted. One tablespoon of it comes with 3.2 glycemic load points. It's rich in nutrients but lack fiber. Definitely make sure there are no additives. As it's liquid, you can even add it to hot and cold drinks, except coffee and matcha, I presume, because it has quite a strong taste. Besides that, you can sweeten dessert and porridge bowls and use it in baking. Avoid apple juice concentrate on Candida cleanse, though. Okay, let's have a short rundown before we move on to artificial sweeteners. Of all the almost whole food sweeteners we spoke about, which one is my favorite? And which ones do I have in my pantry? The one that I use every day is mesquite powder. I add some to my breakfast bowl and evening dessert. And you'll also find many of my baking recipes using mesquite. My second favorite is carob. It was absolutely irreplaceable in the candida cleanse phase when cacao is to be avoided. The third one that you usually can find in my pantry is lucuma. I absolutely love the sweet sour taste and nutrient density. The rest are so and so. Well, Yakun is sweet, but I prefer the taste of mesquite and lucuma, and monk fruit is so damn expensive and hard to get where I live. Also, as it's fruit juice powder, it has almost inexistent fiber content and therefore comes with much higher glycemic load than the other powders. Let's move on to a very interesting topic. Low glycemic artificial sweeteners. Stevia is a sweetener and sugar substitute derived from the leaves of the plant stevia. The active compounds are steviol glycosides, which have 30 to 150 times the sweetness of sugar. However, steviocytes, the active ingredient in stevia, is transformed into steviol by our gut bacteria in colon, and that is toxic, causing a big spike of mutagenic DNA damage. The World Health Organization considers up to 1.8 mg of stevia compounds per pound of body weight to be a safe amount. In other words, Drinking up to two stevia sweetened beverages a day should be considered harmless. Stevia comes in two forms, dried and powdered stevia leaves and liquid stevia extract. While the first can be considered almost whole food, the latter is definitely a processed product. I found that I can't have the powdered form because the aftertaste is simply too strong and unpleasant while the liquid form is quite mellow, mild. So I've used it in baking as well as some desserts and candy recipes. The price for liquid stevia varies from two and a half to five and a half dollars per fluid ounce, and stevia leaf powder from 1.12 to 7.1 dollars per ounce. Now let's talk about the sugar alcohols, xylitol and erythritol. Xylitol is as sweet as sugar, it is a sugar alcohol that is found in small amounts in many fruits and vegetables. Since xylitol is still a refined sweetener, it doesn't contain any vitamins, minerals or protein. 
Even though sugar alcohols are technically carbohydrates, most of them do not raise blood sugar levels and thereby don't count as net carbs, making them popular sweeteners in low-carb products. It has zero glycemic load. The downside of xylitol is that it doesn't get absorbed, so it draws liquid into your colon and can have laxative effect. Use it exactly as you would use regular sugar. It costs around 8 to 13 dollars per pound. Erythritol. Like xylitol, also erythritol belongs to a class of compounds called sugar alcohols. It has about 70% of the sweetness of sugar and comes with a glycemic load of zero. Unlike xylitol, most of the erythritol gets absorbed into the bloodstream before it reaches the colon. About 90% of erythritol is excreted unchanged in the urine. However, eating high amounts can still cause digestive upset as the remaining 10% travels down to colon. One study showed that 50 grams of erythritol in a single dose increased nausea and stomach rumbling. However, feeding studies providing up to half gram per pound of body weight show that it is very well tolerated. So unless you're eating massive amounts at a time, you are unlikely to get an upset stomach. At first, erythritol was considered harmless by Dr. Greger's standards. However, recent research has shown that it may even be helpful as it contains antioxidants. Again, use as regular sugar. As it's a bit less sweet than sugar, you might need a larger quantity though. That is, per every tablespoon, add an extra two teaspoons. The cost range is from four and a half to six dollars per pound. All the previously mentioned artificial sweeteners, stevia, erythritol and xylitol are suitable on candida diet. We previously talked about monk fruit juice powder, but what about the artificial sweeteners that include monk fruit extract? When people were randomized into groups and were given drinks sweetened either with aspartame, straight sugar, stevia or monk fruit sweetener, the 24-hour average blood sugar was more or less the same in all groups. How can this be? The people in natural sweetener group ate so much more for lunch following the morning sweet drink that their blood sugar shot up as high as if they were given sugar, although their blood sugar stayed stable after the sweet drink they were given in the morning. Now I wish they did that study again with natural sweetener groups not pumping up their caloric intake and see what happens to their blood sugar then. The bottom line is None of the artificial sweeteners is helpful. Maybe except erythritol because of the antioxidant content, but they are not harmful either. Which sweeteners that generally are considered healthy, but definitely are not low glycemic? Maple syrup, coconut sugar, coconut blossom syrup, agave syrup, yacon syrup, date sugar, date syrup, an easy thumb rule here to remember is that any sweet liquids with no fiber cannot be low glycemic and anything to do with dried fruits is not low glycemic. As for coconut sugar, it has the same glycemic load as table sugar, so high. However, it does come with some nutrients found in coconut palm, so it definitely is a bit healthier than table sugar, but it's still not low glycemic. Which low glycemic sweeteners are the healthiest? Of course, the whole food sweeteners take the first prize, closely followed by the almost whole food sweeteners that were mesquite, caro, glucuma, yacon. I would exclude apple juice concentrate from this list though. As far as the artificial sweeteners are concerned, the healthiest option seems to be erythritol, 